the fundamental problem is that Africa remains one of the very poorest regions in the world. And in fact, it's been a great failure of the world. There were 167 million people living in poverty in Africa in 1980. And today there are 470 million people. And this is something that we should be taking a long, hard look at. We should be feeling very, very ashamed of the failure of the international community to help Africa. Um, but unfortunately, as you said, the numbers of those who are hungry um, and dealing with poverty have, have gone up um, since the days of, I don't know if this is aging myself, we are the world, uh, when uh, there was a, a real push to try and change things, correct? So, Sarah, you're absolutely right. It's extraordinary. And you, you remember there were these great campaigns to make poverty history. The Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations, goal number one was meant to be to end extreme poverty by 2030. And the world has completely lost focus on this. And it's a tragedy because, in fact, it would not take a great deal of effort to make a huge difference, something like 0 0.1, 0.2% of global GDP would be all that it would take to, to fill that poverty gap in Africa and lift people out of extreme poverty. And yet we're not doing it. What are wealthy nations and developed nations doing wrong here? I think one of the fundamental things and it sounds very strange and it sounds radical to people, but one of the fundamental things is that we are not having the confidence of giving cash to people. Most African communities know much better than a foreign government does what their real needs are. If you imagine yourself in a very poor community, every house has a different need. One person might need to get their kids back into school. Their neighbor might need to fix their roof. Somebody else might need to put some food on the table. And giving cash to people is the most efficient and effective way of delivering support. And it gives them dignity, gives them choice, lets them be in charge of the decisions in their own lives. But one of the things that's holding us back is there are uh, immense psychological blocks to giving cash. So a huge amount of money is wasted with the United Kingdom, European donors, the US refusing to give cash and often giving things in kind which communities don't want don't need and have to sell for cash to get what they actually do need. I do want to lastly ask you, ask you about Give Directly. Now that it says it all in the name, uh, but how do you go about doing this? Because it, it, it's not an easy task, is it? No, it, so we've been helped by a revolution in technology in Africa, which is mobile money. And many, many Africans now are able to receive money directly on their phones. And if someone doesn't have a phone, we will issue them with a telephone. That allows us to transfer cash directly from someone in the United States or Europe right into the hands of the most extreme poor. And the results are revolutionary. It is extraordinary how what would be a small amount of money for you or I can be life transforming in a poor community in Africa. You see the most wonderful things on education, on housing, on people getting livestock, amazing improvements in nutrition, in education enrollment all coming from cash. And I, I would encourage people to look at it seriously, not, not necessarily only at Give Directly, but at other people who are doing it, because it is the great undocumented revolution in international development. And I think it will be a very important part of how we address extreme poverty. And anybody who'd like to contribute, please do.